Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Wednesday, and welcome to the first day of October. Let's go to radar. I want to show you where the precipitation is happening right now. So we still have our same area of low pressure. And I got to tell you, this thing's going to be a slow mover. It's going to continue to push a lot of moisture in to the West Coast, the Pacific Northwest, and BC for probably the next couple of days. And then by the end of the week, it's going to finally dislodge and begin to move into the interior and have more of an effect on Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado, and even Montana with snow chances. So we'll look at that coming up in a few minutes. Let's zoom in just a little bit. So Central California is seeing this moist return flow off of uh, the Pacific uh, and some precip there. You might have some snow over the very highest of the Sierra, but otherwise it's mainly going to be rain there. One more stop up here into the Pacific Northwest. You've got some snow happening right near, and I'll, right here, and I'll show you that up at Rainier here in just a second, Mount Rainier. But uh, most of this is going to be rain. Rain snow line up here in Washington State is at about 7,500 feet today. Um, it's running about 6,000 feet up into parts of interior BC, so it's a little colder up there. Um, but a couple of cameras, so let's go up to Paradise. And so here you go. It is wet. It's all rain here at Paradise. And if you've ever been up here, you know that you've got the lodge there. And then you can you start to ascend up to Muir Camp eventually and then up to the top of Rainier. That rain snow line at about 7,500 feet. I say on the summit of Rainier, probably three, four inches of snow today and 60 mile an hour winds. Uh, up to Whistler Blackholm. Look at the view on the Glacier Express up there, and that's at about 7,000 to 7,100 feet. Everything's covered in snow up there. Got a little bit of snow there from 7th Heaven on that view, but it's all rain at the base, of course, much lower at about 2,000 feet, so just rain down there. And you can actually see some of the clouds as you kind of look your way up the mountain. Uh, one more view. Let's go up to, uh, here we go, the Roundhouse view. You can see the snow on the surrounding peaks, and this is at about 6,000 feet. You are getting a little bit of rain snow here, and obviously you've got snow on the higher peaks around that. All right, let me go to my bullet points here this morning, talk about what to expect. So we've got the storm system in the Pacific Northwest, um, northern tier right now. Rain snow lines, BC, it's, it's about 6,000 feet right on the coastal range. Interior BC, it's a little higher. 7,500 to 8,000. Washington State's at 7,500. Wyoming, much higher. You're talking about warm air that's sitting over, uh, over Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, and Colorado, at least 12,000. Now, later in the week and this weekend, that snow level will start to drop as that storm system moves in. And then there's at least one, maybe even two additional storm systems behind that that will take us out 10 days um, to roughly the 10th, 11th of October. And you can see the best odds of snow here on some of the very highest peaks. Um, so we've got a little bit early, and then again, that one or two chances afterward takes us into that 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 time frame. So I won't go through all that, but you can see the best shots of snow right there. Um, looking at the other uh, water vapor satellite. So remember on this, your dry air is down here and the oranges, the reds, and the, the black colors. Your moisture is here and the whites and the blues. That's where the action is. So that's our big slow moving area of low pressure, pulling in the moisture off the Pacific and kind of ro rotating it around the area of low pressure. And notice behind it, it looks like some energy trying to dive in behind that, that area of low pressure. And eventually uh, pieces of that will break off and affect the interior states, the inner mountain west, as we kind of work our way into this, uh, this weekend. And I do want to take you to um, the Atlantic and just show you what's left over. So um, we've got the left, though, we got, well, this is Imelda, still a powerful tropical system. And then you've got the remnants of Umberto. Now that's already exiting very, very quickly and will get pulled into the flow. That energy, that spin will get pulled into the flow and affect potentially the UK. Um, it's going to make it all the way to the UK by this weekend. So and that could be quite a significant storm system for them. All right, let's go in and take a quick look at the uh, forecast radar here across the west. So we'll start this off at, uh, at lunchtime here today, October 1st. 
uh, what you're looking at is the intensity rain depiction here in the future. This is what the radar should look like. So this is all pretty light when you see these light blue returns. If you were to see some greens or yellows or oranges, that would be a much more intense or heavier type of precipitation. But you can see what we've got. So we've got our area of low pressure and we continue to see rain and snow, depending on elevation, stream um, into the west. All right, let's move this into the, uh, the future here. Let me get rid of that. Move this into the, uh, the future here. So let's see, there's dinner time tonight. Here we are early on a Thursday in the morning. There's lunchtime on Thursday. So again, that low's not moving much. Precip's kind of staying right where it, uh, it's at right now. Um, there's uh, dinner time on Thursday. Here's Friday morning. Let me point out a couple of things here. So Friday morning, you, you'll notice some energy here starting to break off and move into the interior. So it's going to make a move like this, and that will move the precip from west to east. And again, some of that's going to be snow on the higher peaks. All right, there's lunchtime on Friday. Um, here we are. This is early on Saturday. So Saturday morning, definite movement. You've got rain and snow in Montana, Idaho, uh, Tetons, Wind Rivers, Yellowstone. Look at this. Precip up and down the, uh, the Wasatch, the High Uintas, and some developing in Colorado. Um, so initially, the snow levels are going to be high through Montana, uh, Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, Colorado, but they'll slowly drop, gradually dropping as this storm system pulls in uh, some cooler air. So I'll go back to that. That's the final frame. That's early on Saturday. All right, here's your 10-day snow forecast. No, you know what? Let's go into the um, atmosphere, first of all. So today, this is up at about 18,000. You're looking for areas of higher or lower uh, pressures than normal here and it's pretty easy to spot. So this is effective today. There's our big storm system over there. There are the departing areas of tropical uh, energy out there in the Atlantic. All right, now looking down the road, this is 10-4. This is when our storm system starts to make its move into the inner mountain west. Um, there's even energy up here rotating through uh, parts of Alberta and BC. Looking even further down the road, this is 10-11. This would be another storm system right here dropping into the west and that would also move into the interior with cooler air and chances for snow. So again, it's, it's like certainly two storm systems, but there might even be a potential third behind all this um, in the extended forecast. All right, now here's that, uh, here's that 10 day snow forecast for the West and it's, it's got quite a bit of snow. This has fluctuated over the last few days, but we're looking at anywhere you see these pink colors here, these bright pinks, that's over six inches. And in some cases we're looking at a foot. Uh, but quite a bit indicated there in Wyoming, Montana, uh, up around uh, Red Mountain in the parts of BC, Alberta. Uh, still some snow there for the coastal range. I mean, this is actually indicating quite a bit of snow. So let's zoom into this. And again, this is a 10-day snow forecast. So you're looking at Wyoming, parts of Utah, Colorado, and also parts of Montana. So you're looking at probably 6 to 12 inches over the Wind Rivers. Quite a bit of snow up here, at least six inches for Yellowstone, the Big Horns. You've got uh, potentially six or more up here through parts of Montana, Big Sky. Now, the indication here in Utah, certainly up to six inches for the high winters, but maybe we could see some snow accumulation over the very highest peaks of the Wasatch. We'll have to watch that and see what the snow level ends up uh, at. And there is some snow indicated for Colorado, although it looks a little disjointed. Um, there are some pockets of maybe six inches there. Let's do, um, let's go up to Montana. Take a look at this because this is actually a pretty significant snow forecast. I mean, look at all this action up here near Whitefish and then running down through Glacier. I mean, that's six to 12 inches of snow. I mean, you can see some of the numbers here. There's a 16, there's a 12 up into parts of uh, BC, Alberta. Um, widespread snow down here around Big Sky, Red Lodge, the Absaruka uh, Beartooths, um, and snow indicated through parts of uh, Idaho. Um, let me take you into Colorado. This will be our last stop. So in Colorado, again, there's some snow. It's not terribly widespread, but looking at potentially up to six inches in parts of Colorado. Let me show you, what, actually we'll end on this. This is the long range snow um, ensemble forecast for Yellowstone Lake 
up there in Wyoming through October 16th. And notice what it does. It, it definitely gives, uh, definitely generates snow to that entire area and that fits with the snow forecast I just showed you. This, uh, the ensemble mean shows about six inches up there. So we're definitely talking about, uh, talking about accumulation potentially all the way down to the, some of these valley floors. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. We've got a lot to look forward to here as we bring in at least a couple of different storm systems. Take care and have a great day.